All right, buckle your seatbelts because we have such a fun video coming up. So we have to do unit 3B, which is changing forms of quadratics, and then we're going to go into different things with solving polynomials. So this is where we had the different forms, intercept form, vertex form, and um, standard form. So for this first one, it's asking us to do two different things, go to intercept form and go to vertex form. So what I notice when I look at this equation, if I'm trying to go to intercept form, which means factored form, is that these have a GCF. So I need to take out a 3 to start off with. But since I have a negative, when I want to factor, I also need to take out that negative 3, which leaves me with x squared minus 2x minus 3. So y equals bring down your negative. And then we're going to use, we can use the shortcut for this, multiplies to negative 3 and adds to negative 2, which is negative 3 and positive 1. So x minus 3, x plus 1. If instead I wanted to do the same problem and go to vertex form, then vertex form is where I am going to need to draw my little dotted line. Da, 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 da. And factor out that negative 3 from the left side. So x squared minus 2x. And we put the opposite of a, so plus 3 and then something. Don't know what's going to go there yet. All right. So bring on down that negative 3. And then we're going to do our little box. So x squared. We split that negative 2 in half, so we get negative 1. So x, x, minus 1, minus 1, which gives me x minus 1 squared. What goes in my gaping hole is a positive 1, so that guy needs to go over here. And I get 9 plus 3 times 1, which is 12. Now we're going to get a little more practice with vertex form. So once again, vertex form, that's where we have our little dotted lines going on. Start with putting the opposite of a. So in this first problem, the opposite of a is going to be negative 1. And draw your box, because I don't have to factor anything out. First term, first box. Split it in half, so instead of negative 6x, it's negative 3x. Factor it out. So x, x, minus 3, minus 3. So I get y equals x minus 3 squared, but I have my gaping hole, and in my gaping hole is 9. So I'm going to do 2 minus 9, which would be negative 7. On the problem on the right, when you do opposite of a, so opposite of negative 2 is positive 2, and I'm going to multiply that by something. We need to factor out our negative 2, so x squared plus 4x. Bring down your negative 2 so you don't forget about it. Draw your box. First term, first box. Split your 4x in half, so 2x. x, x, 2, 2. So x plus 2 squared. And then in your gaping hole is a 4. And we get negative 3 plus 8, which would be positive 5. Changing to standard form just means multiply that stuff out. Multiply that stuff out. But we need to be careful when you see the squared we need to draw our literal square and multiply that. That was horrible. More than normal. There we go. Um, multiply that out using our box. So x minus 1, x minus 1. Excuse me x squared minus x minus x plus 1. So when I combine those like terms, I get x squared minus 2x plus 1. But don't forget about 3. I know you already forgot about 3. He needs to be included. x squared minus 2x plus 4. With the one on the right, 
I would bring down that negative 1 and multiply it once I've gotten my answer. So I have x plus 3, x minus 1, so that's x squared, 3x, negative 1x, negative 3, so x squared plus 2x minus 3. So y equals negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. Yay, it's time for more dividing with the box, our favorite thing in the world. Okay, so we have, let's draw our little box. Dividing, whatever you're dividing by goes on the left. First term goes in the first box. And then we say what times x gives me x cubed? x squared, so that's negative 1x squared, but I don't want negative 1x squared, I want 2x squared, so I need 3x squared, 3x, negative 3x, but I don't want negative 3x, I want, huh, I don't have an x term, so what does that mean I want? I want 0, how do I get to 0? I need to add 3x, so that's 3, and negative 3, which is exactly where I want to be. So my final answer, which some of you need to work on making sure you're writing your final answer. My final answer is this guy, and it is a factor, if it asks me if it's a factor. That is a factor because I had no remainder. All right. Now we got a, a little longer one, but we can do it. All right. 2x plus 7, first term first box, what times 2x is 2x cubed, x squared, 7 times x squared is 7x squared, I don't want 7x squared, I want 17x squared, so I need 10x squared, what times 2x is 10x squared, 5x, 5x times 7 is 35x, but I don't want 35x, I want 23x, so how do I get down there? I need to go down by 12x. Then what times 2x is negative 12x? Negative 6. And 7 times negative 6 is negative 42. So once again, we have a winner. This one's a factor. And my answer, though, is the top. x squared plus 5x minus 6. Put what you're dividing by on the side, x minus 4, first term first box. What times x is 3x cubed? 3x squared. 3x squared times negative 4 is negative 12x squared. But I don't want negative 12x squared, I want negative 2x squared, so I need to add 10x squared. What times x is 10x squared? 10x. Negative 4 times 10x is negative 40x, so that means I need whew, 42. What do we think, y'all? Is this one going to be a factor? I'm thinking, nope. We're going to have a really beautiful remainder here. So that's going to give me 42, and then 42 times negative 4 is going to be 8, 16, negative 168. I don't want negative 168, I need negative 2. So my remainder is going to be 166. And I know if you were doing that problem on your own, every single one of you would think that you did that problem wrong because that is a lovely remainder. Okay. And when we have a remainder like that, we're going to write plus... 166 over what I divided by, which was x minus 4. We're going to do the next problem in class, so skip a root, but basically if it asks you if it is a factor, you're going to divide all those until you get something with no remainder. If it says which is not a factor, you divide all of them until you get something that um, does have a remainder. Okay. Root theorems, yay, something quick. So root theorems, if I want the rational roots... That means my p's over q's. So I have p, I have q, 
and my answer is going to be my P over my Q. So remember, P, contrary to what is intuitive, is going to be the factors of your last um, term if it's in standard form. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. Your Qs are factors of your leading coefficient, so 1 and 3. And so my P over Q is 1 over 1, which would just be 1, 1 over 3, which is 1 third, then 2 over 1, which is 2, and 2 over 3, which is 2 thirds. If I give you irrational or imaginary roots, though, we can give the conjugate. So if I have 5 plus square root 3, I also have 5 minus square root 3. If I have 7 minus 2i, I also have 7 plus 2i. All right, now for our favorite page in the whole entire quarter. Can you sense my sarcasm? Writing equations and solving equations. Okay, so when we're solving equations, or writing equations rather, you want to look and see if you have any rational roots. Rational roots means I don't have any square roots, I don't have any i's. If I do, like I do right here, I am going to bring an arrow down, skip some space, and change that to a factor. So instead of negative 4, it's going to be x plus 4. I'm going to need that in a little while. And then this other one, I am just going to say x equals 7 minus square root of 5. Now, I know you, and those of you who listened to me did this much better the first time around. If it's a minus, we just said we could make it a plus because I have both the plus and the minus. You should get the same answer. But when you don't change it to a plus, you don't get the same answer because you make a mistake with your negatives. So change it to a plus, okay? Now, we're going to minus that 7 over. So the left side I get x minus 7 equals square root of 5. I want to get rid of that square root, so I'm going to square square both sides. This is where somewhere you need to do your little scratch work, or some of you can do this in your head. Just don't kill any puppies. Okay. x squared minus 7x minus 7x 49. Ugh, did I give you large numbers again? Of course I did. x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals square root of 5 squared is just going to be 5, and then I need to minus 5. So sorry that this is such largely lovely, huge numbers. 49 minus 5 is 44. And now we're going to multiply using the box. Now, can I be lazy? All right, this is Miss Vance's way of being really lazy. I'm just going to draw my box right under there and multiply by the x plus 4, because I don't want to write that out again. So I get x cubed minus 14x squared plus 44x, 4x squared, negative 56x, and dun, 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 176. Okay, so combine like terms, and I get x cubed minus 10x squared minus 12x plus 176. Woo, don't you feel accomplished? I'm sure. All right, solving. All right. First thing, I, I'm trying to be nice when I give you a problem like this because when you try to graph it, you're not going to find any x-intercepts, so that should hopefully jog in your memory self. There's another way to do this, which is to see if it factors, which it does. Is there something that multiplies to 16 and adds to 10? Yes, there is. What is it? As I change to a pin. 8 and 2. So usually we come over here, blah, 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 plus 8, plus 2. But what did I start with? I started with x to the fourth, and in the middle I have x squared. So instead of these being x's, they need to be x squareds. And now I could set that puppy equal to 0 and solve. So 
x squared plus 8 equals 0, x squared plus 2 equals 0, minus 8, so x squared equals negative 8. Do the square root, don't forget your plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus 2 square root 2i. You know how to simplify. Hey, that rhymed. Sort of intentional. If I'll pretend like it's not. All right, subtract 2 from both sides. Square root, don't forget your plus and your minus. So x equals plus or minus square root of 2i. And there are my four answers. Plus or minus 2 root 2i and plus or minus square root 2i. Yay! All right. The other way is to graph. Yay, graphing. So Desmos or on your graphing calculator. And also, apparently, I was a little tired when I wrote these, so these two both need to be minuses. I guess I accidentally hit the equal sign. Sorry. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to graph to find an x-intercept and then divide. So when I graph this first one, you're going to find out that it crosses at positive 6. So the first step is to graph, and then if I have an x-intercept at x equals 6, that means I'm going to divide by x minus 6. So let's divide my equation. And when I divide my equation, I do first term first box. What times x is x cubed? x squared. Then I get negative 6x squared. Hey, that's what I want. So what do I do? Move on with your life to the next one. 4x. What times 4x? Sorry. What times x is 4x? 4. And negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. Hint, this should always work because you got an x-intercept, which means it should divide evenly. And now what I do is I take the top and I solve it. So I have x squared plus 4 equals 0. Now, if I hate my life, then you could do quadratic formula, or you could work smarter, not harder, and do the square root method. So x squared equals negative 4. Square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. And I get x equals plus or minus 2i. And then I also have my other answer that I started with with which was six. So those are my two solutions. Okay, so looking at the next one, I don't see an obvious way to factor. So once again, you're gonna graph. And when you graph, you're gonna find that there's an x-intercept at eight. Eight is great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by x minus eight. First term. First box, x cubed. What times x is x cubed? x squared. Then I get negative 8x squared. But I don't want negative 8x squared. I want negative 7x squared. So I need one more. What times x is x squared? Just an x. x times negative 8 is negative 8x. But I don't want negative 8x. I want negative 1x. So I need 7x, which is going to give me 7 and negative 56. So now what I need to do is keep on solve or ruin the top. Now, that's definitely not square root method. So we're gonna A, B, C, easy as one, two, three, and do quadratic formula. We X equals opposite B plus or minus square root B squared minus four A C all over 2a. All right, so x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 28, which is negative 27, all over 2. And we need a factor tree, although y'all are getting really fast at simplifying square roots, so may not need this anymore. But we'll still do it just for fun. All right, negative 1 plus or minus 3 square root 3i, because it was a negative, over 2. And then what was my other answer? I started with 8. So there are my three answers.
Last thing is graphing, which y'all rocked at the first time, so I'm not too worried about. And this is where we don't want to use a calculator because your calculator is going to make you think you did it wrong when you did it right. So what we need to do is identify if my degree is even or odd and whether it is going to be a negative or a positive. So I see I have negative. So I'm going to go ahead and write that negative. Then I have to look at my exponent. So I have a 3, this is a 1, and then a 2. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6, which is even. So I'm going to sketch my little even negative graph. It's going to look like that. Okay, so let's draw my x-axis. And let's put my key points. I have negative 3. I have 0. And I also have positive 1. Not to scale, y'all. Okay, so that, I'm going to move this. The um, little mini sketch I did tells me where to start my pencil. So I'm going to start my pencil down here in the negative land. And the first thing I'm hitting is the negative 3 which has an exponent of one, so I'm just gonna pass straight through that like it's a line. The next thing I'm gonna hit is the zero, and that is my term that is x cubed, so I need to make it look cubic. So I need to do a little bit of a, a wiggle, wee. And then when I hit the one, it's a parabola, so we're just gonna bounce right off of that spot right there, okay. And now I look at my overall graph. Does my overall graph look like that? Yep, so that's just a quick check that I can use. And let's do the same thing next. So it's gonna be a positive. And now let's look at the exponents. I have two plus one plus two, so this is gonna be odd. So odd, positive my little mini sketch looks like this. Sketch our axes. I have negative five. I have negative three. And I have positive two. I know y'all are drawing more beautiful graphs than me. Okay, so negative uh, is where I'm gonna start down here. So that's where my little sketch is starting. When I get to the negative 5, it's going to be a parabola. So I'm going to bounce. When I get to the negative 3, it's also going to be a parabola. So bounce. And then when I come back up, going through 2, it's just a line. So I'm just going to pass straight through. And overall, my shape does look like an odd positive graph. So I'm good to go. Remember, in Algebra 2, we're not focused on how low do you go, or where exactly these maximums and minimums are. We are sketching. Sketching is the key word. All right. Last thing is to go backwards. So we're going to say y equals, and I just like going left to right. So the first x-intercept that I hit is at negative 2, so that's going to be x plus 2. And then it's making a little baby parabola right there. The next spot it hits is at 0. So a lot of you like to put x plus 0, which is fine. And it just shoots right through there, so it's like a line. And the last spot that it hits is at 1, x minus 1. And it's bouncing off like a parabola again, squared. So let's double check. That would be positive, and then my degree is 2, plus 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, so odd positive. And does my original curve look like an odd positive graph? Absolutely. So that's probably my right answer. Now if this was multiple choice, like it might be on the midterm, then they probably will write it like this, x times x plus 2 squared times x minus 1 squared, because x plus 0 is really just x.